Good evening. You're also welcome to the show. Thank you for staying up a bit later than usual to watch us. But you know, it's been a big night for news. Happy Brexit Day, everyone. <laughs> yeah. The divorce has come through. Britain has left the EU, and hey, we're single and ready to mingle. I wonder who's going to try and screw us first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> eat my chlorinated chicken. You know you want to. Uh, but fair news to Boris Johnson, though. He did stand up to Donald Trump this week, didn't he? Over the Huawei deal. Huawei. It's a tricky word, isn't it? Trump actually has trouble with it, too. It's one of the things he finds hard to say, like, uh, sorry, guilty, and I can't, I'm married. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Donald, not happy. He's actually banned Huawei products from the White House. Uh, Melania has an Apple phone. Of course she does. Sweet. Apple phone, orange husband. Cute. <laughs> Trump, though, does have a point. We do have to be careful of Chinese spies. They have many subtle, undetectable ways of listening in to our leaders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real picture. Uh, <laughs> It was actually for celebrating Chinese New Year. Now, understandably, uh, festivities are subdued this year as travel is curtailed all around the world. In fact, I know some people who are even refusing to travel to America. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's get some guests on! <laughs> Later, we'll be meeting a true comedy legend, the great Jim Carrey will be here! Yeah! Plus, we'll have music from breakout Scottish star Lewis Capaldi! <laughs> so good! First, we have the two stars of the critically acclaimed new movie, Queen and Slim. She's a model turned actress and one of Hollywood's rising stars. He's the Oscar-nominated star of Get Out and Black Panther. Please welcome Jodie Turner-Smith and Daniel Kaluuya! Proving to be a great year for this actor with an Oscar and two BAFTA nominations to her name. Now she's kicking ass as Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey. It's a warm welcome back to Margot Robbie! <laughs> hello, 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 Prince, down, 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 down. So nice to see you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I, now, I feel bad. How rude am I? I saw Jodie backstage and I was telling her how much I liked the film. I totally ignored the congratulations that are clearly in order. For what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your big lunch? <laughs> 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 Uh, no, congratulations. Thank you. Is this your, this your first baby? Yeah. Oh, OK. Where, where are you in the great scheme of things? Um, I've just got a couple months left. So, okay. yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm at the finish line, I think. Well, okay. not the finish line, but yeah. very yeah. close. And doing this press, do, do, are you the guy that stops people touching the bump? Because people love to touch the bump. No, but I, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Yo. But today she was like, we did a junket and she was like, <sighs> And I was like, yo, is it going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's do this. Uh, and, uh, Margaret Robbie, you're in town, whooping it up. You've got the BAFTAs this weekend, and you're yeah. the Birds of Prey premiere on Wednesday. Woo! That's and, uh, right. Now, comic book heroes and action films, we kind of assume they appeal to kind of nerdy boys, essentially. Yeah. And you kind of forget there are lots of nerdy women out there. Oh, who, yeah. who like these films. Yeah. yeah. I think everyone's got their inner nerd. Yeah. You know well, I mean? you are a proper nerd, aren't you? I, f I mean, when it comes to Harry Potter, I'm a massive, massive nerd. Well, we know that because you posted this picture. Is this your 12th or... You're about 12 or 13 here. <laughs> this is Margot Robbie. Look how on cool. Hard back. Hard back, Harry Potter. <laughs> Ooh, I know you're a real so fan. So oh, fancy. Really? Do you know what's particularly pathetic about this picture? A couple of things, really. Um, <laughs> number one... I'll let you point them out. <laughs> <laughs> number one, it's my birthday. That's how I chose to spend my birthday. Oh, <laughs> oh yay! So cool. What was in the cup? Uh, number two, I'm drinking tea. Uh, number three, <laughs> I'm wearing glasses, even though I don't need glasses. I lied to the optometrist because I wanted to have glasses like Harry Potter. <laughs> Now, Daniel, I think you were... Were you a Harry Potter fan or not? I love Harry Potter, but I just didn't get around to reading the last one. OK, so... What? Uh, I just... I was... What? I had stuff but... to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing... I don't know why I 
happened. I was just like, oh, I'll do it later. And then. Are you yeah. kidding me? So you've read one to six and you haven't read the seven? Yeah, I don't know. What Are happened. you actually kidding? I couldn't bear for twins. I'm like not going to be able to sleep tonight <laughs> worrying about this. Life is a game, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I just like, you know, it's just, you keep it on the edge, yeah. you know what I mean? This is insane to me. <laughs> do you know another fun fact? Well, My husband. This is your thing. This, this is, is fascinating. Thing. <laughs> this is your no, thing. I can go on about this forever. I'm so joke. sorry I brought this up. <laughs> I have no one else to blame. <laughs> My... No, no, Margot, tell us. My... <laughs> I'll stop hijacking the show after this. <laughs> no, no, um, go. Because I'm not here to actually <laughs> publicise Harry Potter. <laughs> um, my husband is in the Harry Potter movies. I know. I was like, had you told me sooner, we would have been married very quickly. But he was um, an extra. He was like, when he was a little kid, he's like one of the Slytherin extras. And you know when Draco like pushes some kids out of the way to, yeah. to see Buckbeak in the third book? Yeah. He pushes my husband out of the way. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Daniel, were you ever an extra in Harry Potter? No, no, someone... I had a... My friend was an extra at school. And then I asked him, like, how would you get into acting? And he didn't tell me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> because you posted a picture of yourself... I wanted to do acting. No, you posted a picture of yourself as... I don't know how old you are, you're a, a little boy here. Yeah. And uh, you look like you could be in Hogwarts. Here you are. Gorgeous. Oh, yes! Gorgeous. I love there's no light on I love that. Oh, I love that. You're the cutest kid. I love that photo so much. <laughs> you showed me that when we were filming. I love that photo. I feel better about my photo now. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous. It Wait, is. Wait, gorgeous. No, gorgeous. Wow. Gorgeous. Oh, yes. I love yeah. that. Chocolate. So cute. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> people you went to school with must be so surprised. <laughs> yeah. <they are. laughs> yeah. I Who's see. a film star? <laughs> What's that, Daniel? Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, OK, here we go. Margot, your movie, Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, comes out on the 7th of February. And now, this is the, the continued adventures of your character from Suicide Squad, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, so, when we meet Harley Quinn, uh, what's happened, what's going on? It's been a couple of years, obviously, since the first Suicide Squad film came out, so in my mind, I can imagine what's happened in the intervening years, but it's not really important to the film. You don't need to have seen Suicide Squad to see Birds of Prey. Yeah. Uh, but at the beginning of the film, Harley and Joker break up, and she is your narrator in the film, and she'll tell you that it was all on her terms and she's doing great, uh, but she's not. She's, like, a mess, and she's getting drunk and making a fool of herself and cutting her hair and, uh, yeah pretty much trying to find her feet and not doing it so gracefully. And, uh, and, and really, the film is the formation of the Birds of Prey, cos for DC comic fans, they'll know that Harley's not a member of the Birds of Prey, but she's a great catalyst of chaos. So she's kind of there to, you know, just stir things up, and then uh, the certain members of the Birds of Prey start... Uh, their stories kind of collide yeah, yeah, yeah. at some point. Because this is your baby, so did you yeah. kind of you set the tone and you like being Harlequin? Yeah, I love being Harley. It's so fun. So, um, yeah, I pitched it when we were doing Suicide Squad the first time around, so four and a half years ago. And um, it's taken a minute to get here, but now we're about to show it to the world, which is really exciting. But I feel like in film terms, that is kind of a minute. It is. I don't know. Some movies are in development for ten years. Yeah, it yeah. takes. I mean, the filming part, that's a couple months. Yeah. But you know, development, that can, that can be years. So, I mean, I wish it was quicker. Yeah. Something like I, Tonya, that, that was a really quick turnaround. From, from the minute we started, like, got the script, we were shooting within a year. And that, that's insanely fast. And then we're out, you know, eight months later or something. And that was your production company as well, wasn't it? Yeah, that yeah. was the second film we, we produced. Yeah. And, like, and this seems to be what actors are doing now. Daniel, beside you, you've started a production company. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, wicked. Yeah. Called 59%. Nice. I, should I know what that means? No. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's, um, my favourite um, book and thing in the world is... Well, one of them is uh, Moneyball. You know the film? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's his win rate, 59%. Oh, yeah. In that season. So, and then I started Googling all my favourite managers. I'm obsessed about football. And then, like, the managers over a 40-year career, their win rate is always around 59%. OK. So I was like, oh, That's yeah. such a good name. Yeah. We, yeah. We, came, we got drunk and came up with our name and no-one remembers exactly why we called it Lucky Chap Entertainment and I get asked all the time and I don't have a good answer. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 That's a great answer. I'm going to start making... Uh, I'm going to come up with something. Uh, Jody, you need to get on this production thing. Yeah. 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 Well, well, of course, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's in development. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, man, it's quick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, premiere. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's watch a clip. Let's watch a clip of yeah. uh, Birds of Prey. Now, Mark, can you set this up? Do you know what this clip is? It's you in the apartment. Yes, yes. What so, do we need to know? So, well, I mean, essentially in this movie, yeah, obviously Harley got kicked out on her ass and she's got nowhere to live, so she's living in a pretty shabby apartment, but... She has a lovable, adorable pet who she adores, who you'll see in the clip. And essentially, uh, this young girl, Cass, who she's somewhat kidnapped, uh, is a nice way of putting it, uh, is in the apartment too, and just kind of seeing what Harley's life looks like. Here it is. Oh. <laughs> 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 I am making out with her, Yeah. Do you know what's I, funny about why that... Because I love that hyena. I love it's that so hyena. so cute. And, I, again, it was one of those crazy ideas that the writer Christina and I had in, de, you know, early development. Because in the like, comic book, she has a hyena. She's got two hyenas. Oh, two hyenas. Turns out there. it's really expensive, so I had to make one. <laughs> um, but uh, maybe if we had another one, it will be a second hyena. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't until we were in pre-production that everyone was like, huh, how do we shoot with a hyena, because they're actually very dangerous animals, um, it turns out. <laughs> and there's one hyena in California, just one. So a we showbiz went, hyena. A showbiz hyena, who's appeared in a few things, apparently. Um, <laughs> so we all went out there to, to go visit this hyena and um, realised that it would be impossible to shoot with him. They are like, well... And, and the whole reason he's in a bathtub in this scene is because he likes to sit in a bathtub. Like, when we went to go meet him, he sat in his bathtub and we were like, I love this, that he just, you know, um, whatever. So we put that in the movie. But, uh, yeah, they were like, well, anything he touches is his and um, you can't take it back. And I was like, oh, well, on a film set, that, we're going to need, like, the couch back, for example, and <laughs> the set back and, like, my arm, if you, but, you know, like... So, uh, so we quickly realised that wasn't going to be possible and we didn't want to do, you know, a guy in a green suit covered in dots because that was going to be weird. And um, so we found a happy medium. We had a really, really big dog and then they CGI'd his fur and, you know, oh. body to look like a hyena. So that was a dog? So that was a big dog, yeah. So when you're eating that thing, is there a dog eating I, the yeah, other? Yeah, big dog. And me doing Lady and the Tramp. Aww. Yeah. yeah, so cute. I could sort of tell it was a little dog. <laughs> I could tell. I could tell. <laughs> Daniel's not impressed. No. I'm not <laughs> Daniel's like, I am not doing that. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I had a pit bull at home, though, so I was like, oh, yeah, I'm scared. I have two dogs. I love dogs. I know. Yeah. I have two <laughs> dog mama. But, you know, but also successful now. Who would have thought that there was a time in Margaret Robbie's life when you... Now, could you not afford toilet paper or you just didn't feel that was a good thing to spend money on? <laughs> What did you use? What did you use instead? What no, 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 it's not that bad. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> what did you use instead? <laughs> I could afford it. I mean, it wasn't, you know, I wasn't flush at the time. Pun not intended. I truly didn't mean to say I, I That was good, that was good. I didn't have tons of money at the time. <laughs> But I was also working all the time and I, I was busy. I know exactly what you're referring to. I know exactly what picture you're referring to because it's the first time I got papped and it was really embarrassing. I'd just been... My friend was in New York in town. She was going back to Australia and she was like, oh, look, I've got some, like, there's still... Do you want the rest of that, my makeup or whatever? I, I'm not going to pack it. And I was like, no, no, I'm good. And I was like, oh, I've got no toilet paper at home, though, and I haven't had time to stop. And I was like, I'm just going to... I was, took the toilet paper because I didn't have time to go, go to the Ooh, shops. Yes. Um, otherwise, I would have. It wasn't a financial thing. And I took her bag, which was a Ralph Lauren bag, but I didn't realise at the time, and when I walked out of the building, suddenly, like, all these cameras, like, chick, chick, chick. and I was like, ooh, oh, my God, someone famous is around. I was like, who is it? And then my cousin's like, I think they're taking photos of you. And I was like, oh, God, this is the worst time to get photographed. I've just got stolen toilet paper uh, we've, got, we've got that picture, and it is genius knowing that in the bag is just a lot of stolen toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Robbie shopping in Manhattan. No, no. My mum called me and she was like, what'd you buy from Ralph Lauren? And I was like, I didn't buy anything from Ralph Lauren. I stole toilet paper, quite the opposite. Because, Daniel, you have a similar thing on set, don't you? I steal socks. Yeah. Oh, I take, some, I take socks sometimes yeah. as well. But I've got a pattern. Because mm. yes. I don't want to be caught. OK. This so may do... spoil this. Oh, yes, so okay. This may ruin this. It That's can't. It can't. OK, oh, OK, go. So I do, uh, I do like, a four-day run. So basically, you come in with your socks, yeah, mm. and then they give you socks, and then like you just don't change it and you take your socks home, and I keep doing that for every four days. On the fifth day, I stop doing it because then they get, then I won't do it for two weeks. <laughs> so you steal socks for every day for two weeks. Four, I steal socks for four days, <laughs> then have a two-week break. 
then I'm back at it. <laughs> I'll tell you why, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Shopping for socks is a waste of life. <laughs> also, costume designers have better taste in socks than me. So, they're always nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, oh, look at these. these are stolen. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, yeah. uh, well, look, let's move on to our second film tonight, uh, Queen and Slim. It's out tonight, and this is a brilliant film. It's sort of, I mean, it's a drama, but it's more than that. It's a kind of a thriller. It's a, a sexy love story. It's all sorts of things, isn't it? Yeah, it's, like, it's a road movie. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like this, um, this uh, couple on a Tinder date. And it's uh, not going amazingly. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants to get laid. She uh, doesn't. Doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, it, he uh, he's driving her home, and then uh, she takes his phone off him, and it swerves the car. And the police pulls um, pulls them over, and then it escalates and escalates and escalates and escalates, and then the officer ends up dead, and uh, they have to go on the run. But that's page 12. That's not a spoiler. I was about no. to say, I was going to say you're running like that. No, no, that's it's in the, the, the end. That's is. in the trailer. That's, yeah, in, the yeah, trailer. that's yeah. in the trailer. It's that's in the trailer. That's in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but, and there are lots of kind of big issues in this film, but somehow it's really thrilling and exciting, and I loved it. I thought it was great. Thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, that, that's what really appealed to me about the script. It was kind of like, it was like this is a serious issue, but Lena, the writer, managed to make it light, because the characters we meet on the road while we're trying to leave the country is, uh, are, are some characters, yeah. especially her uncle. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's really about two people becoming, you know? It's about this journey that these two people go on and who they become mm. because of it, because of the trauma, because of the, you know, the connection. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting is that, because they're on the run, they have to throw away their phones, because obviously it's a tracking device. But um, <laughs> 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 throw their phones. But it's like when you become disconnected, you're able to become more connected. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? They kind yeah, of yeah. throw away their options away, That's like cool. yeah. on the Tinder and all that stuff. So. And and also an another film uh, written and directed by women. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Lena Waif and Melina Matsukas, who's the director. She did uh, Insecure, the series Insecure, mm -hmm. and she directed Beyonce's Formation. Wow. And it is. I was saying to you, it's a. It's beautifully shot. You kind of, there's so much of you in the car. Yeah. You kind of think, ooh, how are you going to... But actually, they mix it up somehow. It just, yeah, it's really good. She's we've, incredible. Uh, we've got a clip. We've got a clip. Uh, so, basically, you're, you're in a, a safe house, mm. uh, but the safe house has been discovered, yeah. and uh, you're trying to get out. <laughs> <laughs> ooh! <laughs> One of the things is probably because the the movie Queen of Slim it's such a kind of essentially a, an American story, so it's sort of surprising to find two British actors in the leads. So you got cast first, Daniel. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met I met Lena at a Get Out screening, and I said, "Oh, you're amazing! You're amazing!" And she mentioned, "Oh, I've got this Bonnie and Clyde story." I was like, "Ooh, that's really interesting." Went for dinner a couple months later. She pitched it to me, and I was like, "That's amazing!" And then like sent me the script. I was think she finished the first draft two days before. Sent me the script, I read it in like an hour, I'm like, this is incredible. And then I just emailed her and said, I want to play Slim. I was in a mode where I was trying to not be British and say, like, no worries if not. Just kind of go, like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to play Slim. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Trying to... Full stop. I am yeah. me. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and uh, she was like, that's nice that you want to do that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> 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 the director hasn't read it. I was like, well, I'll, wait, I'll wait till the director reads it then, isn't it? <laughs> and, then, um, and the director read it, sat, sat down with me, and, um, and, yeah, I jumped on board, yeah. And because they'd already got a British actor in it, did that make it harder for you? Oh, yeah. OK. So I mean, they were like... Uh... <laughs> I mean, I heard that a lot. And it, so it just gave me so much anxiety through the whole process, cos I was just like... Cos they were constantly coming to my team, like, well... We don't, and I was like, well, um, I've been in America for over 20 years, so, um, you know, technically I'm, like, I'm American, kind of. <laughs> Uh, in it. <laughs> 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 you know, and I, I definitely... They, they, they pushed back against it, but, you know, I think... I'm, I'm glad that it, it sort of worked out. Yeah. And uh, now, actors often talk about the pressures of auditions, you know, and everyone's been there. Daniel Kluwer, you have such a good tip for actors. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If there's any aspiring actors watching, I think this is brilliant advice. When you do the audition, leave. Like, as quickly <laughs> as possible. <laughs> Just, like, don't try and small talk. 
Don't try and do like, like oh, yeah, yeah, da, da, try and schmooze him. No, 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 just do your thing and then leave. Just, like, just run out the door. I don't even say bye. Yeah, don't say bye. <laughs> Maybe say bye. No, but the thing is, one time I did that and I didn't realise I had another scene. <laughs> <laughs> And it came out, I was down the door like, Daniel, Daniel, I was like, what, 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 what? Yeah, yeah, no, I can, yeah, I can act. Uh, is another tip, is another tip uh, not to put accents on your CV? Yeah, man. I'm, yeah. I've, I've lied a lot. Yes. <laughs> you got busted once, didn't you? I've got busted twice. Oh. What busted. do you mean? Basically, yeah. Like you walked into Because what is, you know, you know, you've got Spotlight, you know Spotlight? No, it's, it's, an, it's, oh, it's, it's an actor's directory kind of thing. Oh, Basically, sorry, you yes. have to yeah, put yeah, yeah, you have to yeah. put your CV on there. Yeah. And obviously, I want a job, so I put all the accents. It's like, yeah, yeah. I can do anything. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Me. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, give me a couple of times on me. And then, uh, and then, uh, um, so I was doing a scene. It was actually going really well. The auditions going really well. Doing this, 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 that, and the other. And then they were like, "So Daniel, it says you can um, you can do Scottish." <laughs> Like, basically, you can put, like, you put asterisk and it's, like, highly skilled. So I put asterisk on all of them, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so you can, you can do Scottish. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yes, I can do Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> and then they were like, well, then. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> OK. <laughs> so I'm doing this accent, yeah? And, then <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not in Scotland right now. I'm like... <laughs> And I'm like, but I'm like, I'm like, I started in Midlands. <laughs> I started in the Midlands. You just work your way up? Yeah, 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 but I only landed in Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> I across the border. I across the border. And they were like, yeah, could you leave? <laughs> and, and you're like, yeah, this is my second tactic. Because <laughs> yeah. 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 Margaret, what's weird is you're a producer now, so do you find yourself, are you, do you sit in on castings now? And yeah. see people audition, and, like, do you kind of see people doing things, kind of go, oh, God, don't do that? It's, it's really weird to be on the other side of it now. I only sit in the room if I'm going to do a chemistry read and read with them, because I feel like it might throw them off otherwise, so I just watch all the tapes. And um, it's just so... All the things that I was, you know, when I was auditioning, I was always like, oh, God, I hope people aren't watching this and just absolutely, like, being savage and tearing me apart. Uh, yeah, it turns out everyone is so savage and just tears <laughs> you apart. Like, I've sat in a room with people watching audition, like, oh, that was stupid, why'd they do that? And you're just like, oh, my God, this is horrible. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's sc Yeah, it's, sorry, I didn't mean it. No, but you're about to be... <laughs> no, but, like, but Jody, you come... You, you were a model before this, and, like, those go -sees, Yeah. They're, I mean, they're, more, they're more brutal. It. They're more brutal. Oh, they're worse. Oh. Sometimes they don't even look at you. They're just like, thank you. <laughs> they take your card and, like, you know, you, you know that you're meant to go in there and, like, walk or do something else, and they literally just, like, look at your card, look at you, and they're like, thank you, that'll be all. And you're just like... What do you do, what do, you do in them, in the model ones? What do you mean? In the auditions, what do you do? Like, usually, like, it might be if it's for a runway show, you might... They want to see you walk. Yeah. Or if it's for, like, a, a commercial, then you do, like, something. But it's generally... Or you try on clothes. They oh, fit right. you. You know, when you go there and then you have to, like, try something on. But, like you know whether or not they're even interested if you even get to that point. Like, sometimes they literally just look at you, look at your card, and they dismiss you. Yeah. But was it your first go-see, the, the one when you flew, you, you, had you, hardly, you hardly even left the airport? <laughs> that is so bonkers. Tell us about that. Well, I didn't know that. But, so, <laughs> I had been introduced to Hype Williams, and he was... And so I was coming to LA, and my, my friend was like, just let him know you're coming, and you want to sit down and have, have coffee with him and, you know, try to talk to him. And so I was like, you know, Mr. Williams, like, oh, I'm going to be in L.A., I would, I would love to meet you. And he was like, oh, what, what time do you land? Um, and I was like, oh, you know, 8 o'clock. And he's like, my office is right by the airport. Just come by when you land and we will, we will chat. So my friend came and picked me up and we went there. And, and when I get there, there's, like, all these SUVs outside. And I'm like, OK. And I get in there and I'm like, there's all these people. And I'm like, I'm, I'm looking for Hype Williams. I'm, I'm looking for Hype Williams. And then finally, like, he, you know, Hype Williams comes over to me and he just looks at me and he's like... OK, come with me. And we go into the back, and there's, like, a white convertible back there and two guys standing around the white convertible, and it's Kanye in the dream. And I'm like, what is going on? And he takes me over to this other SUV, and he, like, hands me this thing in tissue paper, and he's like, all right, go in there and try this on and, and, and let me know how it fits. And I'm just like, what is this? Me and my girlfriend are like... <laughs> <laughs> and I go in the trailer, and it's, like, uh, this bandage Hervé Leger bathing suit, and I'm just like... So I put it on, and I'm just in this place for, like, 15 minutes. Nobody comes in. Hype doesn't come back, and nobody comes in. And I'm like, what's going on? And then somebody knocks on the door. It's not Hype, and he just looks at me. 
And he's like, right. And he knocks on the next trailer and he's like, put Jodie in hair and makeup first. Uh, she's going on with Kanye next. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and so I had walked into my very first job, which was a music video. <laughs> it was a dream featuring Kanye West. And I just remember, like, I'm sitting there, at, like, me and Kanye are meant to be walking through, like, this tunnel thing, and he's ho holding my hand and he just keeps shouting at me, you need to look more scared! And I was like, I'm <laughs> shitting my <laughs> 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 I even got a picture of you, actually. This is this is you and him. There you are. <laughs> oh. oh. No, I look just confused. <laughs> <laughs> because I really was. Edison, <laughs> 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 hey, we must get on. It is time to meet my next guest from The Mask to Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber, and The Truman Show. This man is quite simply one of the funniest people to have graced the big screen. Please welcome the great Jim Carrey, everybody! <laughs> Thank you. Come in, have a seat. Jim Carrey. Hey. Hey. Daniel. Bear down. <laughs> Bear down. <laughs> I'm here to support. <laughs> so glad I could be here while you're crowning. <laughs> This is television. I know. At the best. <laughs> I, Man, I, I, has there been any cooking? I haven't seen What a any. weird conversation this has been to listen to. Yeah, no, there 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 has. Has. I think he's bored. Oh, bo <laughs> falling asleep. It's no late, kicking. Late. There's been no kicking. Oh, really? <laughs> this is my impression of like the uh, the eighth month. <laughs> <laughs> Almost let it out there. <laughs> oh, what a weird conversation. I gotta say, backstage, it was crazy. I'm th it's stealing socks. I'm like, has Brexit gotten that bad already? <laughs> Yes. Minutes in. Yes. Minutes yes. in. Yeah. Immediately, right? <laughs> I gotta show you my socks now. Of course. Oh, oh, oh. We've got some love socks right there. They're beautiful. See that? Yes. But the this boots. Beautiful. Like, are, yeah, I'm not gonna Well, I gotta tell you, the boots are the uh, snake from the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Very good care of it. That is Very expensive. Good care That's of expensive. You gotta treat it. Yeah. You treat it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Carrey is back in the world uh, in Sonic the Hedgehog. It opens on 14th of February, which is a Valentine's treat, surely. That's right. Uh, it's all about the love. It is. But you're not giving us your hedgehog. Uh, what did you say to me? <laughs> you're not giving. You're not Sonic the Hedgehog. I am not Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm the evil genius. Yes. yes Dr. Yes. Robotnik. Dr. Robotnik, yes. So, what's his story? What's his beef with He's the hedgehog? It's genius. It's genius meets total self loathing. And it's a beautiful combination. Yeah. And there's a lot of that running around right now. You They're... know? <laughs> People who are countries under themselves who have billions of dollars and, you know, ideas. Yeah. 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 But, so. but it is about a very fast hedgehog, also. It is about a very fast <laughs> hedgehog. Yeah, that's part of it. <laughs> yeah, that is part of the story. I suppose it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it is really fun to kind of just, uh, uh, you know, open the door of the corral and let the Mustang run for a second, you know? <laughs> just uh, just have fun. And, you know, I don't know if there's a word that was in the script that's actually in the movie, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was total desperation the whole time. But it's really a blast because. No, it, you, you, look like you're, you look like you're having so much fun in this film. I am. I'm absolutely having the best time of my life. Yeah. And, and of course, for some people living under rocks may not know, Sonic the Hedgehog was, of course, a, a computer game back in the day. It surely was. And we're trying to get kids away from the computer games and back into the theater to watch movies about computer games. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real thing. But, but I did you see a child now. burst out of the, the doors of the theater during one of the screenings and run like Sonic. Which is like the magic of movies, yeah, right? Cool. Is when the kid wants to be the character yeah. in the movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? So just make sure they don't run into traffic or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep a hold of them when they first come out of the <laughs> that, theater. That would be bad. Yeah. Uh, we've got a clip. We've got a clip from Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, this is you as Dr. Robotnik. Yes. Um, I think it's fair to say you're sort of, would you say, relaxing in your lair? Uh, well, yeah. They just said, here's a room. Do something with this music and uh, have some fun. So it's it's the evil dance of uh, you know self glorification. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But see, that's a Canadian band. I came up with that song from my childhood, and it actually turned out to be a band from Vancouver. 
you know, it's great. Everybody's in the mix, you know, yeah. of all the different cultures and stuff, especially Australia. I've never been to Australia. You haven't? I've never been. You're I've, I know so many people from Australia. And I wanted to talk to you because you're amazing and I'm so excited for you. Oh, it's thanks. incredible that you've gotten as far as you have with your obvious physical disadvantages. <laughs> something. That's just, that's just pure talent there. It's the talent of a lie there. Uh, but uh, my gosh, you're amazing, man. Oh, I, I really, really enjoyed to uh, get out and uh, everything you're doing is fantastic. Oh, I appreciate you, bro. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I made a song for you. Actually. <laughs> What do you mean? What do you mean? Really? What do you mean? I know. It's quick, but it's the best I could do in a Please. short amount of time. <clears throat> What's going on? <laughs> Daniel Kaluuya, Daniel Kaluuya, Daniel Kaluuya, Daniel Beautiful oh, gift you have. Oh, thank you so much. I'm just out here auditioning for everything. <laughs> uh, Broadway show under my belt. And very quickly, are you writing or have you finished a memoir? I, I just uh, did a memoir slash novel. It took me eight years to do. Wow. With a friend of mine, Dana Vachon. And uh, it's a study of persona and the fallacy of the human being. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sell that uh, book. Yeah, basically, it's, uh, <laughs> it's everybody who creates a persona and uh, and uh, is uh, let down by it ultimately. And you posted a picture of I don't know if this is the is this the cover that it's going to have. The, the this is the cover. Posted? Yeah. Uh, interesting story behind this cover. It's called Memoirs and Misinformation. Mm. And uh, and what happened there was there was a there was a, a missile alert in Hawaii uh, a little while back and uh, and I. Uh, and I was in Hawaii. Was this the thing where they texted everybody? They, well, it was an alarm on the television. It was crazy. And, uh, and uh, my assistant, Linda, who lives on the other side of the island, called me crying. And uh, she called me crying and said, uh, we have 10 minutes left, Chief. And uh, what should we do? The missiles are going to land. And um, that uh, picture on the front of my book is an accidental screen grab that she did because she was so tense. So that's my face uh, when I believe that I have 10 minutes left to live. Wow. And that's... it's, uh, yeah, it truly is. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 10 minutes left, that's the face. And it was more, it was, the, the feeling was, uh, wow, that's kind of weird. <laughs> what a funny way for it to end, mm. you know? And I went into this, time of the last 10 minutes thinking she should she said should we get in the car should we all try to meet up and I said I don't want to die in my car and uh, and then uh, I sat down and this overwhelming sense of peace came over me and I started to go through a list of gratitude for my life for everything that had happened and I about two minutes left to go I thought I'll just close my eyes and uh, and then I got the uh, the information that it wasn't real but I was I know what it's gonna be like in the last 10 minutes mm. if if I was to know that it was gonna end so it's a kind of a unique place to be mm. you know to to be able to sit back and go okay there's there's actually a state of calm and tell me this at the, at the eight minute mark when somebody said oh by the way that's not happening and yeah. was it no the two minute mark we were down to two minutes oh, it was down to, yeah, two, minutes. Down but, to but two minutes was it a sense of Relief, or was there a tiny bit of disappointment? I was angry. Yeah. <laughs> I was pissed. I was like, okay, who do I have to call? What do I do here? I was ready for this. Uh, yeah, and they said something like, oh, we pushed the wrong button. I'm like, come on, it's not that much of a family business on the island, is it really? You know, I, I, I would hope there's a process, you know? Well, listen, Sonic the Hedgehog opens up Valentine's Day. Uh, good luck with that, uh, Thank you, Jim sir. Carey. Thank you Thank very you. much. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank Jim Carrey, everybody. Nice to see you.
time for music. This Scottish singer uh, had the UK's best-selling single and album of 2019. Here performing his latest single, Before You Go, it is Lewis Capaldi! <laughs> Beautiful job, Lewis Capaldi and his band! Come on over, Lewis, have a chat, dude! You've got sets and everything. Well done, yeah, sir. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Come in, come in, come in. That's Jody Turner Smith. Thank you, Kiwi. Well done, you. Uh, thank you very much for that. That's the latest single from your album, Divinely Uninspired to a Hellish Extent. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> it's, for, it's for sure an album. <laughs> it is, it mm. is. And, I mean, not the best-selling album of the year. Last year, yeah, but this year, things are going to go downhill. <laughs> <laughs> Do you another one. You start well and it's just, it's just <laughs> incrementally getting worse and worse as you just go by. And no, then but, you're dead. But, um, <laughs> but now... But is now, there a vinyl version? <laughs> there, there is a bit of death. I like the vinyl. Yeah, yeah, death on wax. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that's it there, yeah, yeah. You can vinyl version, limited edition as well. Yeah, Jim, if you'd like to buy it. It costs more money, but... Uh, <laughs> Sure. He's good for it. Yeah, He's good yeah, for yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> We're throwing Lu together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Lewis Bradley, is this the new normal for you, or is it all still kind of a bit mad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you stood by now, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all yeah. good. Rubbing shoulders with the stars. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were at the Grammys recently. Was it last weekend or the weekend before? Um, it was. Su what day is it today? Today's Friday. <laughs> Still Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, My true love gave to me <laughs> a <laughs> ration <laughs> of vitamin C. <laughs> but, uh, yes, so it was, on, it, was on, it was on Sunday, and uh, I went and I was nominated, and I won fuck all. Were <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nominated at the Grammys? I was nominated during it, though I, I, I was sitting in my chair at the Grammys, and uh, it was lovely, nice chair, and I was in a good spot. But the th they have, like, these people who come and sit in the seats when people fuck off to do a pee or a poo. <laughs> and then I kind of got up... I, did the, I wasn't... I didn't do any pees or poos the whole time I was there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, yeah, so I was kind of sat, and every time someone got up... I was on the end of a fucking roll. And, <laughs> sorry. And, and, uh, sorry for swearing, everybody. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And yeah, I was on the end of the row, and uh, people, people kept getting up, and I had to keep getting up and sit down. But yeah, the seat filler people come in to make it look busy, and then during during one of the bits of the commercial breaks, um, a lady came up to me and said, um, "Oh, I'll take this seat now," and I went, <laughs> <laughs> "I went, whatever do you mean?" Uh, <laughs> and she went, "Oh, this seat you're in. I'll get if you get up out. It's my. I'll take it now. Don't worry." And I went. I don't know what you're fucking talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then she went, oh, so, so this is your seat? And I went, listen. <laughs> I know I didn't win the Grammy, but I thought I'd be allowed to stay to the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck at the Brits. Uh, the Brits of the 18th of February, you, you haven't lost them yet. They're still in play. I've not lost them yet. They're but, still uh, in play. <laughs> There's four. There's four available. Yeah, four. four available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll be an almighty defeat when I. <laughs> yeah. And we must tell people uh, the tour The tour starts in March, but it's sold out already. Uh, Woohoo! Fucking yeah! yeah. <laughs> but no, no, here's the thing. This is amazing. So, didn't the tour sell out? Before your debut album came out? Yeah. Either. How is that possible? Just raw sex appeal. <laughs> People saw a picture uh, and they went, yes. I mean, you look at me and you think, oh. yeah. I'm gonna have a good a feast for the eyes. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. But like it's an arena tour. It's lots of seats, yeah. lots of bums and seats and lots of money in my fucking pocket. That's <laughs> 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 you know I mean? it. Woo! <laughs> um, and I like <laughs> <laughs> and I went to <laughs> this is not my first glass of red wine, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I'm having a good fucking time there. It's good to be here. Good to be here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lewis Capaldi, it's been a pleasure. Uh, good Thank luck you. at the Brits Cheers. and with the tour. And thanks for the great sports. Lewis Capaldi, everybody! <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks, sir. Uh, right.
Despite that nearly a uh, we go, we do have time for a very quick visit to the big red chair. Uh, who's there? Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> You saved me. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, I, was, I was like holding onto the chair. I was like, oh, no, There's I can't. There's something about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, let's, let's try something else. Let's, try something else. Let's, see, let's see how the chemistry is this time. Sure. Okay. Hello. Hi, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's try one more. One more. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Will we? No, I don't. I, I let her go. Okay. I let her go. What? Oh, let her go, go? Or talk, oh, talk? No, I like. I, I oh, you're. Oh, she has to say. You, Jim wants to hear your story. Oh, brilliant. Hi. What's, your, what's your name? My name's Tammy. Tammy. And uh, where are you from, Tammy? I'm from Hammersmith. And what do you do? I work in marketing. Marketing. Okay, off you go with your story. <laughs> <laughs> Should we try one more? Stop it. No. Uh, okay, that really is all we've got time for. If you'd like to have a go in the red chair yourself and tell your story, you can contact us via our website at this address. Please say a huge thank you to all my guests tonight. Louis Capaldi! <laughs> Jody Turner-Smith! <laughs> Daniel Kaluuya! Margot Robbie! <laughs> and Jim Kay! <laughs> Join me next week with singer Alicia Keys, actor Tamsin Gregg, comedian Nick Mohammed, friend star David Schwimmer, and the incredible Hulk himself, Mark Ruffalo. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>